Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move from just straight, here's a random triangle in the middle of nowhere that has random lengths and random angles on it. We're going to go towards what we call applications of trigonometry. So you can see this question is all clothed in practical language. And in fact, a big part of this, it's why you can see nothing on my board um, and you're going to need to have like a fresh space to do this question is. Um, a big part of this question is interpreting, reading, understanding what it means, and then translating into the mathematics. So let's read it together. Uh, Eleni drives 120 kilometers on a bearing of, and then you see this, this is the first roadblock, right? If you haven't done bearings for a little while, there's generally two ways to represent bearings. This one, what's the T stand for? True, right? Um, sometimes also called three figure bearings, but I think true is a more helpful way to say it. Um, a true bearing, pick up your pen, a true bearing is measured from where? If I drew like a little compass here, where do I measure from? Yeah, from north. So let's go ahead on your little compass there. Let's start by having north in there. So we measure from true north, hence the, you know, the fact that it's called true bearings. This time it's 130 degrees. So when we start from here, um, I guess the next question is, do we go um, rotating to the left or rotating to the right? To the right, we're going to go clockwise, okay? So 130 degrees, you can see, it takes us past that right angle. It takes us kind of facing in that direction. Does that make sense? So if I were to uh, go around, from here I hit 90 degrees, and then I'm going to go further. 130 is like, it's close to halfway um, between these two bottom right um, parts of the compass. Does that agree? So I'm going to have something that looks a bit like that. That's going to head off. And then that gives me this line I'm going to draw shortly, which will be at 130 degrees true. Okay, so there's the first piece of information. What comes next? Um, well, actually, uh, I should probably go back. Uh, now I've got a direction. I can do my 120 kilometers. So let's go ahead and put in, I might use a different color for this one. And if you've got a different color, that'll be helpful too. I'm going to put in where she actually drives. And that was 120 kilometers according to the question. Now I'm ready to go into the next sentence. She goes which direction? She drives west. So I always think about Western Australia, that's how I remembered, which you could do northeast, you know, never eat soggy wheat whatever works for you. So she's gonna drive west, I guess if I drew another little, you know, compass here, you can see me going to the left. How far does she go? Have a look at the question. Until she is south of her starting point. So here's the starting point up here. So south is down here. So I guess what I could do is extend that first compass that I drew. I'm going to go down like so. And you can see I'm going to collide with this due south line, right? So I'm coming back to my original color. I'm going to go off in the westward direction, okay? So this is her journey, and because she traveled west and she hit this line that's due south, what can you tell me about this dotted line and this part of the journey? They're at right angles, perpendicular. So that's handy. All the knowledge we've got from the previous set of questions will help us here. How far is she from her starting point correct to the nearest kilometer? So I'm going to put a pronumeral on here to help me. Um, where is the pronumeral going to go? You can point to it, right? It's going to be, yeah, at the back, can you tell me? How would you describe it verbally? Um, it would be south of the Yeah, south of the starting point. I guess I could draw this like solid black line here now, yeah? And I guess, you know, pretty unoriginal. Let's call it like X for the unknown. And it's a length of kilometers, right? So that's what I'm after. Okay, wonderful. So now I've set up the question. Um, now I just need to make sure I use the trigonometry knowledge I have appropriately, right? Now, I've got some lengths here in this triangle, but what's sneaky about this question? What's problematic that I need to do a little bit of extra work before I can do any trigonometry? Yeah, go ahead. Um, the angle on the inside. Yeah, I, I need some angles on the inside of this. I've got the 90, but that's, it's always a right angle triangle that I'm getting in these kinds of questions. I don't have either of these angles, but I can work it out, right? Which one's easier to work out? This one in here, right? I guess would be fine. That whole angle there is a straight angle, so it adds up to 180. So the missing acute angle is going to be 50. Let's go ahead and mark that in there, right? At this point, I've now turned this sort of um, worded question here, which is a bit less familiar, into something completely familiar. This is exactly like all the questions we've been doing recently. So how are we going to set it up? Can someone give me a suggestion? What's the first thing I'm gonna write? 
I have a think. All right, so I've got I've got an angle in here. I've got one angle, and then I look at these two sides over here, which one's known and one's unknown, right? Adjacent to 50 degrees, hypotenuse. So this is going to be cosine. So I'm going to write down cos of 50 degrees equals what? Adjacent on hypotenuse. Yeah. So there's just one extra step here to make sure I'm, I'm clear. Uh, I just want the x by itself, so I'm going to multiply both sides through by 120. I think that is a really helpful uh, line to have. And then at this point, it's calculator work. Yeah. So x is going to be equal to. Who's going to get there first? Has someone already got it? One, three, four, dot, dot, dot. Um, the question itself has asked us to get it to the nearest. Kilometer. So I'm going to put a last line for approximation, 77 um, kilometers to the nearest unit in this case. Are you happy with that? Any questions on how we set that up? Um, just as an interesting exercise, of course, you can work out this other angle in here um, to be 40. And I guess if that was the one that we worked out, what would we, we would use a different ratio altogether, wouldn't we? We wouldn't use cos, what would we use? Opposite of hypotenuse is going to give me sine. So sine of 40 degrees should be x on 120, and then off you go. Okay. I promise two examples. Let's have a look at this one. Okay. Oh, wait, no, sorry. I tell a lie. Before we go to this one, I said there were two ways to describe angles um, in bearings questions like this, right? We looked at one which was true bearings. If, for example, you were writing this question and you didn't want to write 130 degrees true, how else could you describe this direction that Eleni travels in the first place? There's another way to do it, not with true bearings. Any takers? Hmm. It's quite tricky um, to think back, right? The other way we would sort of describe this is in relation to our north, south, east, west, right? So we would say, oh, you know, to get around to here, it's between, between south and east. Do you agree? It's between south and east. So a way you could describe this same angle, you know, which direction is she traveling in, is it's somewhere between south and east. How far is it between south and east? It's this angle here, right? You start at south and you wind how far towards east? 50 degrees. So we could call this south 50 degrees east, right? Does that make sense? Why don't we start with east and then go to south? For absolutely no particular reason, to be honest, this is just the convention. In much the same way as it's just a convention to start from north, you could start from anywhere else if you wanted, but this is just what we all agreed upon. Okay? So if you see this, same thing, you just need to be able to interpret that, and you'll see that come up in the exercise. Okay, four minutes, I reckon will be enough. Let's do this one quick smart. This is not about bearings anymore. We're going to need to draw a new diagram for this. Read it with me and help me out. A boat's 200 meters out to sea from a vertical cliff of height 40 meters. So we've got a lot of information right there, okay? The first thing I'm probably going to draw is the cliff. Cliff is 40 meters. And it's vertical, looks good to me. And then it says, the boat is 200 meters out to sea. So where is this going to go now? Where am I going to draw 200 meters? It's horizontal. Yeah, it's going to be horizontal. It's, it's sort of off in this rightward direction, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and chuck in uh, 200 meters. There's my boat. Are you happy with that? It then says find the angle of depression. So just like in the previous question, a lot of what we are asked to do is tied up in language, right? So you're going to meet angles of elevation and angles of depression. Where are angles of elevation and depression measured from? Any takers? What do you reckon? Angle of elevation is looking down up. Down up? Yeah, yeah. Angle of depression is when you're looking down. Okay, good. So there's a lot of like positional language in there. We've got an angle of depression here. So as you just stated, it's looking down towards the boat, right? But where it's measured from is, well, if you weren't looking down, where would you be looking? And the answer is off to the horizon, which is horizontal, okay? So this particular angle of depression is how far down do I have to look? So in this particular diagram, our angle of depression would be here. Okay, so I'm going to write that in even, I'm going to label it as angle of depression. And it's worth jotting down that both angles of elevation and depression are from the horizontal. 
So that's what it is and where it is. What's the actual angle? I can't even remember. Oh, that's what we're trying to find. That's what we're trying to find. So should we give it a name? What would you like to call it? I think I heard a theta. That'll do. Okay. So that's what I'm trying to find. Um, worth mentioning the angles of elevation. If we went from the boat looking up, right? Again, it's from the horizontal, which in this case would be along the waterline, and then we're looking up. Okay, so we've got, again, sides. We've got an angle up here, but just like with our bearings question, part of the challenge is the angle you get provided is not inside the triangle. So how do I get it from the outside to the interior of the triangle? There's some knowledge that we learned back in year seven, eight that might help us. Yeah. It's the same value than the one. Okay, so there's a few corners. Which corner are you talking about? The boat corner. The boat corner. Okay, so down here, I can call this theta as well, but it's actually quite important that we say why. It's because these two angles here, they form this, what's well, a backwards looking Z, right? What kind of angles are those? They're alternate angles. That's because we've got a horizontal and another horizontal, right? So it's actually worth mentioning, right? The horizontal lines, are parallel, because by definition, they're horizontal, right? So since they're parallel, I can use all the stuff that I know about parallel lines, um, alternate angles in this case, if I had corresponding angles or co-interior or whatever, right? The whole point is, it gets an angle from the outside of the triangle to the inside. We're ready to write an equation with a trigonometric ratio. We'll do this real quick. What ratio am I gonna use? Ten. It's 10 because opposite on adjacent, relative to this particular angle. So, you said 10. That's going to be 40 over 200. Okay, so at this point, I can just do a teeny bit of simplifying, but mostly the calculator is going to do the work, isn't it? Right? Can someone go ahead and tell me what theta is equal to? Give me some decimal places as well. 11.3099 dot dot dot. And the actual accuracy they want is? To the nearest degree. So I don't even need to go to degrees, minutes, seconds to do that approximation, right? This is going to go straight to 11, and I'm good. 